Hi, everybody. My name is Arco. I'm Owl. And this is the McCall Center for Arts and Innovations Mini Art Lab. Today, we are giving you a 20-minute lesson on making stencils and using them. We hope you enjoy it. Mm -hmm. So the idea for our lab today is that we are going to be creating stencils out of paper to make patterns that we can use to decorate walls, canvases, boards, or any other kind of creative space using a little bit of spray paint and a little bit of elbow grease. So. Remember that whenever we're dealing with spray paint, um, you want to wear a mask of some sort, as well as try to spray outdoors if possible. Yes. Keep that in mind. Uh, so here we go. All right, guys, we are looking down at our workspace, and the first thing that we're going to need to do is get all of our materials together. Several sheets of this really thick 11 by 17 paper. We're going to need a pencil. We are going to need a pair of scissors to do the cutting. We are also going to need a ruler and we will need some tape to help secure our paper and our stencils. Last thing we will need is spray paint. Uh, for this particular project, we are going to be using three colors and our particular brand is Alster that we enjoy using, but any other kind of paint is workable. Montana Gold, Montana 94, Rust-Oleum, everything works for this. First, let's walk through what we're going to be doing. We're going to be taking these sheets of paper. We're going to be folding them in half. We're going to be drawing a half of our design on there in pencil. We're going to cut those designs out and we're going to use those open holes in the paper to spray color into the areas of our poster or canvas or whatever surface we're going to use. I hope everybody is ready to get started. You have all your materials. Let's go. Our first step, I'm going to need you to grab three of your 11 by 17 sheets of paper. You're going to take them, take the corner, and fold it over. Please make sure that you fold it over nicely, making sure those corners do meet. This is really important if we want to create a balanced shape when we go to create our stencils. So as you see, I'm taking my time. I'm making sure that it works. I like to secure the bottom and the top and then flatten out the rest of the way. Once I've got that bend, I come back with a little pressure and we are nice and folded. I would like you guys to repeat that with two more sheets. We're going to have these nice pieces of paper. This is what we're going to be drawing our stencil on. Once you have your sheets folded, we're going to be drawing a design on them. So our first step is to get the sheet ready. I like to have my folded side facing left and my open side facing right. The first shape, as you might be able to read here, is a diamond. What I'll need you to do is take your ruler, put it up against the folded edge at the top of the paper, and I need you to measure down one and a half inches and make just a small tick mark right there. At the bottom of the sheet, I need you to repeat that thing. From the bottom of the sheet, go up one and one half inches and make a tick mark. Before we move our, pa our ruler or paper away, we need to create a halfway point as well. So the half of 17 inches is eight and a half, 8.5. So find the eight and a half mark and put a mark on this side of the paper. We're gonna repeat this midway point on the other side. And we will be doing this midway point for all three of our stencils. So I put this here, I put it on the very edge, and I measure eight and a half. Okay, now that I have this midpoint, I have the start point for my diamond, I have the bottom point for my diamond, I need to make this 
outside point for the diamonds. So take your ruler and measure from the edge one and a half inches. What I like to do is take those two midway points, lay your ruler up across them. Now you have a straight line across the center of the paper. Match up any number you want to the edge of the paper and count in one inch, one half inch. I've made my mark and now that's where the corner of that sheet is gonna be. We're gonna take our ruler now and connect these dots. I'm going from the top corner to the center with my pencil, making sure that my points line up. Looking easy, it's a really nice line. I'll move my paper around and repeat that same step. Bottom of the diamond to the center. If you notice, there's nothing on the other side of the sheet, but we don't have to worry about that. What you're gonna do next is you're gonna take your scissors and we are gonna cut along that line to create the diamond shape. So if you would like to pause your video, you can take the time to go ahead and cut all the way up this line. The paper is not too, too delicate, so it's okay if you have to force it a little bit. Uh, when I typically make stencils, I like using uh, an X-Acto or a razor blade. Uh, it helps me get sharper corners and curves. Uh, for the sake of safety and ease, and really uh, simplicity, scissors are a great tool. You'll notice we cut this shape out. I have this negative, well, this is a positive space diamond. Now I have a diamond stencil. So you can take that sheet, unfold it, make sure that those folded areas aren't too, too foldy. This stencil is ready to go. We're gonna go ahead and create our other two stencils before we get started with any of the painting. All right, so our second stencil is going to be a star. This image is going to go on top of the diamond shape. This shape is a little more complicated. I have already put my lines in and my measurements, but I will walk you through those. So repeat the process, fold the paper over, make sure the corners are good, put your ruler on the folded side, your folded side should be to the left. I measure, for this one, I want the star to come and pop out a little bit above the diamond. So instead of going down a half inch, I just measure one inch and make my mark. Same thing from the bottom, I go up one inch. Remember, go ahead and make your halfway point too, eight and a half inches, there. In this case, I want us to make sure that we know we're gonna be one, two, three, four, five points on this half sheet, six, seven, eight. It'll be an eight pointed star total. I have a point at one inch here, one inch down here, eight and a half in the center. I'm gonna take my ruler to the other side of the paper and I'm going to do my midway point at eight and a half. And as I'm looking at my star, I calculated this out before. If you would like to measure either up from the center, one, two, three, four, five inches. If you're measuring from the top, it's gonna read three and a half. I need you to go from the center and let's come down five inches. One, two, three, four, five. There's the mark right there. Okay. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna take these points and we're gonna create lines going to our center. This really is the easiest way to make star shapes, especially um, more complicated ones like this. So I've lined up on my six inch mark, or five inch mark, and my center point, and I create a line going down. See this nice dark center line? I'm gonna do the same thing with my other side. Nice and thick line, I hope you guys can see that. We're gonna do that, address that last point. This point is gonna be smaller than the other two. 
Uh, we're gonna go and lay our ruler across the center so it lines up. And now I'm gonna line up a number there. So I lined up the six. I wanna go in one inch. So if I go in, it's gonna come down five. I've made my mark. So my edges should be one inch away minimum from the edge of the paper. Once I've got that line, I'm just gonna take a moment to measure from the center to where my mark is. It looks like it's four and a half inches. That sounds like a good number to use. Let's go ahead and measure down this line from the point that we made, four and a half inches to here, four and a half inches to here. What this is gonna do is it's gonna give us our guide. From the center, we're also gonna measure up to the six inch mark. These points are gonna be six inches. I need the star's width to be one inch total. So I'm gonna sit at my center point and I'm gonna go half inch up, make a mark. Half inch down, make a mark. That guide is the same one we're gonna be using on our other points. So I said on that four inch mark, I say one inch up, good. One inch, half an inch down, good. It's half an inch and half an inch. On that third one, I say half an inch, good, half an inch. Now, we just create lines from all of our points to where they intersect. This guide, half inch, half inch. Got a line there. Got a line there. Same thing here. Boom. Boom, and allow your line to run all the way across the paper. I'm not, we're not sure exactly where it's going to meet the other lines. Hmm. This shape is complex. So if you need to pause the video and take some time to maybe figure it out or make sure you're doing it right, feel free to do that. I will still be here. All right, I have all my lines solid. What we're gonna do now is take the scissors and go ahead and carefully cut out this star shape. I did take the time to prepare one already. This is what it should look like when we're done. You should also have the star uh, positive shape available to you. Both of these can be used as stencils. I'll show you more about that later. So we are going to go ahead and add these stencils to our image. As you can see, I took a piece of canvas and measured 11 by 17. What you can also do is take one of your clean sheets of paper, lay it down, and tape it down so that it doesn't move around too much. What we'd like to do to make sure the stencil doesn't move around too much on the paper is tape it as well. Not too, too much tape to keep, to get it to stick to the paper, but just enough to get it to hold on tight and not move around while we're spraying. So I take the tape and I actually just like putting it here on the corners. If you want to put it kind of in between the edge of your cut and the edge of the paper, that is fine too. All right, I have tape on my stencil. I have the stencil, I'm laying it on the paper. Let's match up these corners and then push the tape on so that it stays. Okay, our first color, yeah. Uh, I like this teal, so we're gonna use this teal first. I'm gonna put a tip on. I'm not gonna fill in the whole shape. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a nice line around the edge and have it fuzz in a little bit. So. There we go. New cans sometimes require a little spray. One easy, even stroke should be enough. If you feel like you need to go over it again, that's fine. Just don't overload the paper with paint because you're also going to need time for it to dry. If you feel like it's covered well, carefully slide your hand under the stencil peel the tape up, being sure not to touch too much of that wet paint. 
All right, we have a beautiful diamond here. Next, we're gonna take a couple of minutes to let the paint dry. Our paint is dry. We're gonna go ahead and apply our second stencil. This will be the star that we cut out. Once you unfold the paper and you stick the tape onto the back side, we only use four pieces. It only has to hold enough to not move around. So we'll carefully, once again, line the stencil up with the sheet of paper. Push the tape down. All right, to complement that blue, I believe we should use like an orange, yeah? So I'm gonna take this orange, I'm gonna take this cap. I'm not gonna make the same mistake as the first time. We're gonna go ahead and spray it. Good, it looks like it's ready to go. This one is easier to spray because the lines are smaller. We're gonna be able to fill it up. It's one pass. All right, now we're gonna repeat that same step where we carefully, more carefully than the first one, undo the tape and the paper stencil from the poster sheet. We're slowly gonna lift. Incomplete. Voila. You have now completed a poster stencil. Now, remember, you can take these images and you can mix and match them. You can repeat them over and over again. You can even use these positive shapes, lay them on top of, an, of one color and spray another color on top and you'll come out with an amazing pop. I can give you an example of that right here with our next sheet. Let's say we wanted to get a little color on the back. All right. For this example, I'm not too worried about the drying. What I can do is take a little piece of tape, put it on this positive shape, and lay it down in the center. And what you're gonna see is an opposite effect of what we just did with the diamond. I'm gonna just miss the edges a little bit. And now I'm actually going to use my scissors to get up under the shape and lift it up. So there's a whole lot of variety and types of things that you can do with stencils. It's all a matter of your imagination and the colors you want to pick and really how far you want to go. On this example, I decided to cut out a third set. Um, these are just to address a couple of little corner details. So I'm going to take this stencil. I'm going to set it here. And I'm actually going to hold it down with my hand this time. We're going to use, I think the black was the one I wanted for this one. All right, we're going to use black. I'm going to use this and I'm going to actually fill in those shapes. The nice thing about folding the paper and then cutting your stencil is that you can always create really nice symmetry with the images that you use. So, this is a completed poster. I really hope you guys enjoyed learning the process. We also really hope that you take the time to do it, uh, explore more, create your own images, cut them out, and we'd love to see what you guys do. We'd like to thank the McCall Center for having us here. We would like to thank all of you guys for participating and watching. And feel free to reach out and share what you create with everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one.